Today on Locked On Red Wings, Lucas Raymond. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ News Radio podcast. Well, Scotty's the host over at Locked On Tigers, a freelance and a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And Scotty, happy MFN birthday, brother. It'll be your birthday on Tuesday here as I check my imaginary watch on my wrist. And the Red Wings, at least on Monday, rewarded you with a nice birthday present. If they could do that back-to-back nights, that'd be fantastic. But holy crap, it was never more over in my life. And now it's never more back. It was a roller coaster of an evening. Yeah, that was absolutely absurd. Um, I, I thought I thought I was gonna pass out. I thought I was having a heart attack at one point. That 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 could not have been good for my mental health, my physical health. No part of that was healthy. Um, but I would absolutely do it again if it resulted in another win tonight. So. It, it was it was actually a detriment to my physical health. Yeah, because when uh, Raymond I, I scored, will die sooner after that having happened. Yeah, no, but like there was literal physical ramifications of them scoring those goals. Yeah, oh yeah. Raymond Perfect. scored that game tire, and I threw my arms up, and there was a pop in my shoulder. I almost threw my shoulder out of socket. Close. Close. Like I went, ah, oh, like it was at first exhilaration, then pain. And my fiance, Allison, who actually stayed up, she's not a hockey fan. She stayed up to watch the game because she was so into it, started laughing her ass off because I almost As dislocated my shoulder celebrating Raymond's goal. I As mean, dude, a horrible game, electric finish. Another <laughs> game that kind of encapsulates the Red Wings <laughs> season this year. Um, difference maker right scotty i mean it's it's a no-brainer take it away let's just yeah I mean, it. well, <laughs> it's really feel like this is uh maybe the layup of all layups here but i'm gonna go with uh, lucas raymond is gonna be my difference maker believe it or not unbelievable man uh, absolutely unbelievable and you know when we when this calms down and whether they win or lose tonight and no matter you know if they're you know what? Whatever happens with Washington, no matter if if tomorrow's their last game of the season or if they they play some more games, like w- when the dust settles and we really take a look back at this season, we're going to talk about things that went right, things that went wrong. There might not be anything that has gone more right for the Wings in the the second half of the season or in the 2024 calendar year than the play of Lucas Raymond. This is he has he has absolutely taken a monumental leap forward he has been arguably the best player on the team at times certainly while Larkin was hurt he was um I mean he has the the way that he has taken off and the way that he has been playing the last month plus it is absolutely absurd and they are you know in terms of difference maker they are quite literally not still in the playoff hunt without Lucas Raymond. And that's not even just this game in a vacuum that that well, goes back weeks now. I mean, the Red Wings aren't playing for playoffs in game 82 without Lucas Raymond in the last five games, Scotty, he's on a five game point streak. And in that span, he has 10 points, yeah. 10 <laughs> points, riding a five game point streak. Not bad. Two goals tonight. The game tying goal with the goalie pulled with, what a minute and a half left. Let me make sure I get that right. Uh, yeah. There's, so there's a minute and 15 left in the third period and Lucas Raymond game tying goal that I almost threw my shoulder out on was his 30th of the season, 70th point of the season as yeah. well. I mean, the guy's clutch factor incarnate now early on in the game, I had, there were some questionable decisions he made. He passed a couple times when he should have shot kind of regressing, not regressing is like going back to being 
like, but he was passing more than he yeah, was man. shooting in f- situations he should have, like the two on one or another opportunity where he got the puck high up and tried to go back door when he could have just shot it on net. But in when it comes down to crunch time in clutch moments, take over. I mean, I talked yesterday, right? Just yesterday about how there is nobody else on this team with the game on the line whose stick I wanted on more than Dylan Larkin. Well, Lucas Raymond is quickly making a run for that title with a so hat trick against 24 hours changes our opinion on things. <laughs> right. No, but it's, it's literally one and two, right? And then you got Showtime yeah. as oh, yeah. third and to bring it probably fourth in terms of cl- clutch factor, right? To bring it scored a big time goal here too. I, Lucas Raymond deserves everything that's going to be coming his way contract wise this off season. Come crunch time, nobody has been. I mean, J- Dylan Larkin's the only other player who has been as clutch as he has. But Lucas Raymond in this five game stretch has been hotter. Like, I I cannot say enough good things about what Lucas Raymond has done. He is the sole reason why in game eighty two the Red Wings still have a shot to make the playoffs. And we'll talk about that come segment three, what they have got to do to make the playoffs. I'm sure if any of you guys are on social media, you've seen it floating around. The simplest truth is just win. Don't worry about the other teams. Just take care of business and win. Yeah, none of it um, matters if you don't win. So that being said, Scotty, like, is there anything else you want to you want to Brett? I mean, Lucas Raymond, how much can we nope. say? Man? Hey, you know the 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 video with the coach after the big win where he goes, Bring me my money. <laughs> <laughs> that is Lucas Raymond this summer. Well, and two, right? Streaking down the the ice, right? They get the puck up to Larkin. Larkin carries it up into the offensive zone. I see Raymond streaking down the ice opposite wing. Before he even hit the blue line, I thought to myself, Larkin's going to feed it across. Raymond in all alone. He's going to win it. Like, when was the last time I was that certain a player was going to finish a hockey game for the Detroit Red Wings. Like when was the last time I had without any benefit or any, any doubt that a player was going to be clutch when you needed him to right? like Dylan Larkin and Lucas Raymond, who obviously Larkin got the primary assist on that. Like that's, that's it, man. Like those two guys, just when you need them the most are always there. And it's such a great feeling. Fantastic. The other difference maker in a in a distant second in this one, uh, JT Comfer, he scored two goals in this one as well, and he's like only the difference maker because Raymond was able to play hero. Raymond yeah. can't play. <laughs> Raymond can't play hero be- if JT Comfer doesn't keep the Red Wings in it. He uh, scored. DeBrinket hits the post on a short shot, short side, squirts out yeah, to Comfer, he time? buries it. Yeah, which time? To bring it uh, hit the post once and the crossbar twice, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> right. And then I mean, Gossa Spare hit the post, Kane hit a post. We Larkin hit a crossbar. We can go on and on about all that. That was crazy. Uh, but then and right after they make it four to one, and it seems like the game's over in the second period, 30 seconds later, David Prawn feeds JT Comfer and they score. And I yeah. at that time I was like, Don't do this to me, don't give me hope. And now I'm glad they did because they won and we're still in it. Uh, but yeah, JT Comfer, man, second difference maker. Yeah, for sure. And and I, I think, <clears throat> you know, I, I think that not only is it just, you know, they, they scored when they were down, but it was it was how quickly it was too, man. Like that having that quick of an answer and not playing, you know, eight minutes of hockey down three goals or what have you, you know, and just immediately, you know, horrible mistake by Edvinson, you know, whatever. We talk about that later, but like Bad turnover there, puck right in front of the net. Everybody's pissed. The life is sucked out of the arena. To get that back as quickly as it, it happened, I, I think is is so unbelievably vital. And then obviously Raymond was able to play hero late. So yeah, I, and you know, honestly, outside of that, like Comfort had a good game. Like it wasn't just the goal. He, I, I think he looked solid. But um, yeah, that that was certainly certainly a, a huge moment in the game. I think there's one other one that. Uh, if we're talking specific moments huh. that I know what you're gonna uh, say, we we can talk about in segment two that I think honestly has a case of being like if if a specific play is a difference maker, but uh, I'm fine talking about it in in notable performances too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue on. So stay tuned for that in segment two of Locked On Red Wings. I have such a headache from the anxiety to the exhilaration. It's crazy, but we we will we are gonna push through. I still we got ball. the adrenaline. I got the adrenaline sweats going. It's crazy. <laughs> Here we go. We ball. 
It's playoff time in the NBA and just about there in the NHL. One more game. We need Philly to take care of business. Baseball's in full swing and FanDuel is the place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. But on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Uh, Scotty, yeah, I, I know who you're going to go to, and I'm going to throw it to you, but this player, number one in notable performers, could definitely, you could make an argument for difference maker just on one play alone. Yeah, you know, it's I don't even know if it's necessarily the the player as a whole. He had a couple of really bad defensive letdowns in this game, to be honest, which we've become right, which we've become somewhat accustomed to. However, uh, probably the biggest non-goal, not even probably, I think objectively, the biggest non-goal play of the entire game was uh, Gostas Bear jumping, I mean, like, Odell Beckham Jr. level of, of, you know, reaching back. And I think somebody made that meme probably and, and, uh, and put it on Twitter X, whatever it's called now. But um, yeah, man, unbelievable play to keep the puck in the zone. And then it resulted, obviously they got the puck deep again and it resulted in the game tying goal. So yeah, I think again, like player as a whole game as a whole, whatever, but like that specific moment is, is again, one of, if not the biggest, non-goal that happened in this hockey game i won't even say anything poor about how he played in this hockey game you know we could nitpick and and we could we could talk smack about defensive stuff oh not just that right like that moment yes in particular led directly to raymond tying the goal it does not happen without him suddenly jumping six feet in the air to retrieve a puck and keep it in the zone but just moments before he released a rocket that hit the post another one of the Many posts the Red Wings hit in this hockey game, but he also had three assists in this game. Like, let's not look past that. He had the primary assist on Alex Dabrinkit's goal, who three goals in two games for Alex Dabrinkit now. He ties his uh, high from, uh, I'm sorry, he ties his total from last year in goals, and he sets a career high in assists. So he's one point past his season in Ottawa last year, and Alex Dabrinkit, that's a notable performer. Wrapping that up in the gossip spare conversation, but, you know, that, actually, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm going off on a little tangent. I promise I'll get back to Gossip Bear. But that Debrinket goal is another instance where JT Comfer comes into play because yeah. Red Wings were losing faceoffs all game long and they were getting outworked all game long. This was a bad game. Let's not look past that with a fantastic surge near the end to come back and win it. I think I will look past it. Okay. Well, do what you want. Do what you want. They can't do that again tomorrow. <laughs> I think I but will. Do what you want. Um, but Comfer wins that faceoff. Comfer wins that faceoff. And it yeah. goes back to Perron, who, I'm sorry, goes back to Gosses Bear, who, uh, Al Ulimata, who feeds Gosses Bear, who then goes cross to Alex Brinkett to score the goal. Gosses Bear gets the primary assist on that one. Here's where we get back to Gosses Bear. Uh, Gosses Bear gets the secondary assist on Lucas Raymond's second uh, game tying goal, as we know. Uh, and then in overtime, he gets the secondary assist on the game winner. A lot of Gosses Bear's assists come via secondary assists, which there's something to be said, you know, about you know, not being as directly involved in the play. Sure, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the fact that Shane Gossespierre had three assists and he showed up offensively in a game you desperately needed him to. And his biggest play of the game was just keeping the puck in the offensive zone to get down low to Lucas Raymond. And Shane Gossespierre, I talked, I've talked a lot about you this season in a negative light, but all I have to say in this game is thank you. Because without your three assists, without your hops in that moment, the Red Wings are eliminated from playoff contention. So, Dylan, uh, Lucas Raymond, I mean, there's a long list of players in that third period, but right, like Lucas Raymond, JT Confer, Shane Goss, Despair. Three reasons the Red Wings came back in that hockey game. The three 100%. main reasons. 100%. So, uh, next notable performer I got for you, I kind of already touched on him, Alex it again. Three goals in two games. He picked a hell of a time to come back uh, and start contributing on the score sheet via goals. Again, he was forechecking hard in this hockey game. His defensive play has gotten a lot better. He was second on the team in shot attempt share in this hockey game, Scotty. Second on the team. Now, that doesn't that could be 40% if the team gets killed. But in this instance, it is 81% shot 
shot attempt share. He was second only to Daniel Sprong, who had a 87% in six last six less minutes of five on five ice time. So there's a bit of a of a, a, a time on the ice differential there. 34 shot attempts, four for Alex to bring it in this game, and only eight against. He was a full, he, he was like fly on poop with that puck today. He was getting on top of it. I can't say the actual thing, but you know, right? Like he was just he was all over it and he was all over the ice trying to make things happen. And he finally converted and he was the first goal to start the comeback in the third. So notable performer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I, I completely agree. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, again, not a pretty start to this game. A lot <laughs> went wrong early. Not but... a pretty first 40. Yeah, correct. Um, First 50. But man, they they hunkered down and, and they buckled down and got some unbelievable performances from uh, a lot of players in 20 minutes plus overtime to will them back into it. And yeah, man, I, again, credit where credit is due. And, and like, you, we don't have to do like the... Like, the, there's no big sample size remaining, right? We don't have to do the, oh, well, like, that's going to, you know, that that's, he he struggled in the first period, even though he came alive late. So, like, that you know, we had to watch out for that because, you know, as the season goes along, that could be an issue. No, we have a one-game sample size. <laughs> just win, just win tonight. Just win. Just win. Just win, baby. Just win. Just win. And, and like, that's the thing, right? Like, you don't control your own destiny. Destiny. So the best thing you can do in this situation is just take care of your own business and hope that that works out. And we can right. talk about yeah. we can talk about how they didn't they haven't taken care of business in a lot of moments in this season, especially down the stretch here. But tonight, they were able to overcome adversity, self-inflicted adversity, but adversity nonetheless, and find a way to win. Scotty, this is their first back-to-back wins since Columbus Islanders in March. And the time before that they had a back-to-back win was the last two games of their six-game win streak. That's how much adversity and a lot of it self-inflicted they've gone through. But, like, in the biggest moments, the best players have risen to the occasion and they've gotten the win despite those things. This is the third straight overtime game this team has played. Pittsburgh loss. Toronto win. Montreal win. Like, it's just... And the, and the home win. and this home finale too, right? Like there's so many emotions right now. Like I'm so ex- ecstatic, but I don't want to overlook the bad parts in this game either. And we'll talk about that in segment three, I'm sure. But the last difference maker of the positives I want to get to in this game is you needed Ben Sherat and Moritz Sider to absolutely play the bulk majority of this game. Like Petrie and Edvinson didn't, they played 15 minutes in this game. Because of the fact, one, I'm sure that turnover for the fourth goal against did not help. You, Edvinson finally had his rookie moment you thought was going to happen. He tried to reverse it to Petrie and just ended up deflecting it right off, right out to Gallagher out front. They didn't get a lot of ice time, and a big part of that is because in the in the third period, you were trying to push for a goal. So you wanted Cider, who's got an offensive upside, and you wanted Gossesbear, who's got an offensive upside, to be out there. Gossesbear had like 22 minutes, but more Cider and Ben Chirant not only were being asked to play offensively but like usual they were asked to play huge defensive minutes in this hockey game as well and as always they played against the canadiens toughest opponents now i understand the canadiens their last place in the division and they they're not the tampa bay lightning but that's there were still a lot of minutes of more Sider against guys like cole caulfield in this hockey game he played 17 minutes of his ice time, of his 25 minutes in his hockey yeah, game, man. or was it 27, was against Cole Caulfield. Tw- so, yeah, 17 of his 26 minutes of ice time in this game was against Cole Caulfield. He's been asked to shut down the best of the best and then also go out there and try to provide offensively. Thankfully, Gostas was able to provide offensively in this game with his 23 minutes of ice time. But Moritz Sider and Ben Sherratt were they, they were your defense in this hockey game. You had to double shift them out of necessity and they were they proved up to the task not only that but they were also cider was your fifth best player in shot attempt share in this hockey game 33 shot attempts for only 13 against for fifth best while playing 26 minutes of ice time the most of the detroit red wings (laughs) 
more cider. We talk about Lucas Raymond's going to get paid. More cider is going to get his bag too. He leads the league in block shots and he's the first Red Wing since I think 08 to have 200 hits and block shots in a season. Raymond and cider. I mean, the cores of the future, they're here to stay. They're going to get their money this off season. Yes. Sorry. I know I took all the oxygen with the cider love. It's all right. It's true. Don't worry. I'll let you carry the show for the, the bad part of the game. I'll let you do that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. We're, we're going to head to a quick break. When we return, we'll talk about what went wrong in this game. Cause there was plenty of, there was more that went wrong in the first 50 minutes of this hockey game than what went right. Um, and then we'll just kind of tell you about, we're not going to preview tomorrow's game because it's the same team you're in Montreal. We'll tell you about clinching situations. So stay tuned to segment clinching. We're talking about clinching six situations in game 82. Segment three of Lockdown Red Wings coming up in a minute. We are one game away from the end of the NHL season. The Red Wings are a win and a Washington loss away from making it in. But regardless of where they are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is the number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Raymond, Comfer, Debrinkit, Goss Despair will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Red Wings fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Lockdown NHL and you'll, you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Lockdown NHL. See sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Segment three, Locked On Red Wings podcast. We're going to focus now on the negatives of this hockey game. We, we gushed about the positives, but now we're going to bring down the mood, get a little realistic. This was not a great game by the Detroit Red Wings. It was not. Uh, the first 50 minutes, 50 minutes was abysmal. And uh, I mean, Alex Lyon was not good in this hockey game, Scotty, but it wasn't just him. No. It was not. This was a a, <clears throat> a a weak goalie performance paired with a honestly catastrophic defensive and not even all defensive, just like really bad turnovers at really bad times, <laughs> like consistently in the first half plus of this hockey game. Um yeah, man. Uh, Alex Line did not good look great. It's already been confirmed that Reimer is getting Tuesday is getting the final game of the season back to back, and Line didn't look great. Makes sense. Um, but uh, but yeah, man. This is a couple of games in a row where Lion hasn't been on his A game, and and again, it, it wasn't like this is all on his shoulders. This was this was paired with really brutal defense and right. I, I think that lion actually stepped up and made some big saves in the third period thank goodness uh made a couple i won at least in overtime too um but uh but uh, really the the reason why they dug themselves into a hole was because they had really poor turnovers really rough team defense uh, i mean a couple of assignments just completely blown uh and then not great goalie play on top of all that to make up for it Right, and you mentioned just now the the fact that in the third period he was able to make some big saves. He didn't have a lot of single goal in the third. They didn't have a ton of shot attempts in the third period either. Right. Uh, just 11 shot attempts against in the third. That's pretty consistent with the amount they had all game, 12, 11, 11. It wasn't a – the overall workload wasn't a ton for Lyon, but the problem was the opportunities the Red Wings gave the Canadiens were massive. The Montreal Canadiens had high nine high-danger attempts – in this game. And anytime you're going to give a player that or a team that many high danger attempts, they're going to score goals. And, but at the same time, you need your goalie to make a save, right? You can't allow two goals. The conversation the, for three years, right? The, the same <laughs> what, conversation. What's the conversation we used to say? What was the phrase we used to say? Um, what did I, 
I said I like know. I no, it was like um it was like I, I want to be surprised once or something like that. Like just you know what I mean? Like just like one time I want the <laughs> just want like a, to be like, oh wow, that was a really good save. Like and again, Lion obviously has given us that quite a few times this season. Um, but in this game, kind of kind of fell flat. I mean, I think this is this is the same type of performance we got from Reimer yesterday, right? Like sure. through the first 40 minutes, both Reimer and Lion, well, were put in very bad spots, but also you couldn't depend on them to make a save in that big moment. You know, that first goal, the defense couldn't carry clean, clear the front of the net. They Petrie and Edvinson were pushing, pushing, pushing. They couldn't clear Gallagher away. Gallagher just shovels it backhand from right in front of Lyon, and it goes past him and in. The second goal, they're streaking down the ice. Two forwards get caught back. Their first forward back overcommits to the puck carrier, setting up for a three-on-two on the defenders. The defenders take the two guys wide, leaving just the puck carrier in the high slot, a high-danger area to shoot the puck. And on a bouncing puck, he just releases it, beats Line clean. That's a situation where, like, again, Line's put in a bad spot, but you need yeah. to be you need to ask your goalie to make a save every once in a while. So it's like one of those things time and time again where the fourth goal, right? Edmondson, horrible turnover. Gallagher all alone in front. That's not Lions' fault. That's a defensive <laughs> breakdown yet again. But Clearly. at some point, you need your goalie. Like, it's that you can make the same conversation with Reimer yesterday. I didn't give I I I did not give Reimer credit at the time for his turnaround in the third period, and I should have. In the third period, Reimer did have a nice turnaround and he locked it down what looked much better. Lion, similar-ish. They both look bad for different reasons. Reimer just scrambles. Lion, when he's bad, he doesn't track the puck well. And that was another instance in this and game. Like I think he leads me. the league in drop sticks. Like <laughs> He has to. He has to lead lead the league. I want to see that stat. He has to lead the league. So this is the situation we're in. James Reimer, who I don't have confidence in, is going to be in that in the game against Montreal. But after this game, game, I don't have any confidence in Alex Lyon either. You have two goalies who I've lost confidence in. And again, I, I want to reiterate this they're put in bad positions time and time again. The Montreal Canadians had less than 30 shots in this game. The Montreal yeah. Canadians had 21 shots in this game, but the amount of high danger opportunities we were, the, they were Disgusting. given based on the Red Wings, poor defensive breakdowns that is- the, the, the Harvey Pinard goal, for example, the Harvey Pinard goal was yeah. three forwards Coasting Literally. through the neutral zone, all coasting to the same side. You have two players streaking back and a third forward streaking up the middle. Shane Goss's bear is, and I don't, I, I said I wasn't going to, but I, I need to point it out. Shane Goss's bear, for some reason, even the puck was coming down the wing on Olimata's side, and Olimata was covering that guy. No, Goss's bear was against the opposite board. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, Olimata so, is playing defense and in tracking the puck, and then there's just no one on the other side of so, the ice. So, because three forwards all miscommunicated, misplayed how to play defense, and Goss's bear was caught out of position. The only player playing in his position was Ole Mata in that instance, leaving Harvey Pinard a, a lane to just come down and streak down. Like every single one of their goals was from a misplay or a defensive breakdown. Yeah, but at the same time, it, you should you should be able to ask your goalie to make a big save at some point. So like, it's a, it's a it was the what do they call well, it? it? It's damn a fine you, damn line, you and, and like I I think we're being, I think everything we've said is is like true. Um, but again, at the end of the day, you won and he didn't allow anything in the third and in overtime. So, (laughs) you know, it's, it's, um, I'm not trying to, to justify the performance or say he was on his head or anything, but, uh, at the end of the day did enough. And what we've been saying this whole time is, is just win, right. We've been saying that for weeks now. And it's like, that's, that's, that's it, man. Absolutely. Um, and now you got to just scenarios. win again, but that's you also it. need Washington to just lose. That's the easiest way, right? To get in. Yeah. You either oh. it's yeah. If you get two points, you need Washington to lose. And then if you get one point, you need what Washington to lose in regulation and Pittsburgh to lose. I have it for you. Hold on one moment. Okay. I, I'm pretty Frank sure I tweeted it, it out correctly. earlier. Scenarios for final East playoff spot for the Red Wings to get in easiest path. And here's the thing that's they needed one point to survive. 
Because Washington, yeah, of course, of course, is huge, of course Boston turned into a cellar dweller for this game. I don't even Washington want to talk Capitals. about it. I, I seriously, I don't even want to talk about they it. They had eight genuinely. shots through two periods. What they looked, the Boston? What happened to the Bruins? They they looked disinterested, and and they're playing for the division, mind yeah, you. Still, nah. it's not like they're playing for nothing. Like they the the um the Panthers can still win the division. Like it, it's absurd. Yeah. Anyway, and the Penguins won. And the Islanders right. won. Everyone Every won. Sing- Everyone won. Everyone. So it's still the slate is still even. The only one who didn't win was the idle team in the Philadelphia Flyers because they only have one game left. Right. They didn't and th- that this is what goes to our advantage. The Flyers are going to be fresh. The Canadian or the Washington Capitals an emotional win. Back-to-back, hopefully a little yeah. bit drained on the back on the second of a back to back. Hopefully that plays into our favor, especially with Philadelphia also playing for their season. Because right. they also have a path to the playoffs. Yeah, if, if they win game. and then everybody else loses, then well, us they and, the, and Pittsburgh lose. They have the tiebreaker right. on Washington. So right. if they can yeah. beat Washington and we lose and Pittsburgh loses, and then they're in. Um, so anyways, the Red Wings path to success. Sorry. Any win versus Montreal and, uh, and Capitals earn one or less versus Philadelphia. That is the easiest path. Red Wings win. Washington loses in any fashion because that second point you earned matters big time. Yeah, big time. Other way the Red Wings can get in one point versus Montreal and the Capitals lose in regulation and the Penguins get one point or less. So any Penguins loss, that's it. Those are your two paths in easiest one. Just get the two points and have hope Washington and loses in any fashion. Other ways, a little bit harder. You need two teams to lose. You need one point and Capitals lose in regulation and pens to lose in any fashion. That's it. You cannot lose tomorrow's game. Correct. You lose in regulation, no matter what, because every single team you're competing with has the tiebreaker on you. Correct. And that's that first one's regulation wins. Red Wings don't have more regulation wins than any team yeah. they're competing. Wings with. have 27. I think yeah. both of the other two teams at, I don't know how many Pittsburgh has, but I know Philly and Washington both have at least 30. So, yep. So that this is where we lie. Destiny is not in our hands, but just go out there and take care of business and hope the rest works out. Red Wings are one game away from the playoffs. It's it's on the table. This has been a roller coaster of a season, Scotty. An absolute roller coaster. And we're riding it until the very end. Yep. And I don't know whether I'm super happy or super mad about it, given where the season started and at, we're in the middle of the season where they were. But we're riding it to the very end, and we'll discuss after game 82, you know, what either about playoffs or whether or not it was a success or a failure. Making playoffs is a success. But if after game 82, we'll, we'll know for sure where our heads are at. To, nothing else to be said, right? What, what do you got? Anything left? Don't stop believing, baby. Don't don't jinx us. Don't say it. <laughs> We've all. There you go. We'll be back with a new episode tomorrow recapping Game 82. We will know for certain in that moment if the Detroit Red Wings are going to be a playoff team or not. What a time to be alive. I kind of want to die at the same time. Same yeah, time, thanks. same place. It's your team every day. Every day.